Let us therefore continue our discussion of uh, policy making and policy implementation and we will talk about uh, cabinets and uh, administrative systems uh, today. So uh, cabinets, what are cabinets? Uh, they are a crucial uh, element of the executive branch of uh, modern democratic political systems uh, in as much as uh, they are constituted basically by of the heads of each individual department uh, that constitutes the administration that runs the country, right? So the executive has this whole machinery of institutions that we described earlier, uh, and but at the top of each department, of each area, policy area, right? There is a, a someone, a person responsible with that area, and we will see how. This, these cabinets are set up differently in different um, political systems, of course, because this is where the differences between presidential, semi-presidential, parliamentary, obviously, become very important. So, on uh, Canvas, I've, I will invite you to uh, browse these uh, links, and we will do it together here and uh, just indicate to you what I'm looking for. So, what are these? These are uh, cabinets. In the US, the UK, France, and Germany, you have two links uh, for uh, Germany. So let's, let's look at the US first. So notice that what is, what is uh, obviously, this is a presidential system, right? Uh, constitutionally, all the powers of the executive branch are vested in the president in the US. There's also another person who um, is elected to with the president, which is the vice president, but his role, or her role, is really nondescript, it's not very clear. So that's always a matter of personality. But the executive is vested in the president, who is, right, head of the executive. Uh, and everybody who works in the executive receives his or her mandate from, from the president. So that's very important, right, because why does the president have this, um, this mandate? From the from elections, right? In democracy, uh, in a democ democratic political system, mandate means a uh, popular mandate, right? So because the president is elected distinctly, separately, he has this popular mandate, although he's not direct elected directly in the US, he has this popular mandate, and it is from this popular mandate that uh, the mandate of all the other pe people who he appoints uh, comes, right? So he delegates uh, the executive responsibilities to all the other members. So this is why the cabinet in the US is different from the cabinet in almost every other political system, uh, especially non-presidential political systems, parliamentary, which are very uh, widespread, or semi-presidential, also a very popular model. So here you have the president um, uh, and the vice president, but the president, and then you have a cabinet. So a cabinet is the head of the different policy areas, the heads of the different policy areas. What's different again in this cabinet is that they serve, so to speak, right, the expression is at the pleasure of the president, meaning that he can appoint, he can dismiss them, there's no other check because all their mandate comes from here. You see how different this is from the other political systems. So let's just look through these uh, heads of different cabinets. So the Department of State, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the US they're called departments, but in most other countries they're called ministries. Ministry of Foreign Affairs and so on. So in the US they have some distinct names. So the Department of State is actually Minister of Foreign Affairs. And the heads are called secretaries here, but in all other countries basically they're called ministers. So foreign affairs, finances basically, defense, justice, uh, interior, agriculture, commerce, labor, Health and Human Services, Housing and Urban Development, Transportation, Energy, Education, Veterans Affairs, Homeland Security, right? And then you have other uh, bodies here, but I'm not going to go there yet. So what are these? You recognize that these are issue areas, meaning policy areas, meaning aspects of our lives as a, as a society, right? Over which, which the government, which the executive, uh, manages, controls, where the executive implements policy. So these are policy areas. This is why you have, so you, you will have a department of transportation that deals with the issues regarding transportation, right? Which means that it has a set of institutions encompassing the entire state, meaning the entire United States, uh, and 
that set of institutions applies the laws regarding transportation, right? And at the top of that pyramid, right, is the head, Secretary Anthony Fox. And again, you don't really know about these people, right? Which is very unlike in other uh, 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 political systems, other models. Uh, and again, it comes from their very peculiar relationship uh, and position in the political system, that <clears throat> they're just appointed by the president, but of course they also need to be approved by the legislature, by the Senate. So let's look at the UK, which will be different. Now remember, this is a parliamentary system, right? So, and always have in the, the back of your mind the, 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 you know, our little drawings about where does power come from. So in a parliamentary system like the UK, all power comes from what? From the parliament, of course, right? And instead of having a separation of powers, as in the US, you have what? A fusion of powers. And this is, this is going to be embodied here. So all the members of, remember, all the members of the Prime Minister and the members of the Cabinet are what? Are members in Parliament, right? So let's look at them. Cabinet Ministers, you have the Prime Minister David Cameron, you have a, a Deputy Prime Minister for a very specific reason, but let me actually tell you that reason. So who gets to be in the executive in a parliamentary system? The party or parties who have the majority in the legislature, right? Because the executive is just an arm of the legislature of the parliament, right? Um, you never had a deputy prime minister actually in, in the UK. Why do you have it now? Because for the first time in tens or decades, maybe, maybe more, um, you have two parties that together form the majority in the legislature. It's a coalition. It's very unique. It's like having a coalition here. It's like, it's like two parties being in, in, in uh, uh, having to make a coalition. Very rare. So this is why in parliamentary systems and semi-presidential systems, the executive will reflect the balance of powers in the parliament. So if you have two or three parties who need to get together in a coalition to have a majority, you know, the goal is to, to control the executive, you know, the, 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 the executive branch. So the positions in the executive will be distributed between these, these parties. So the head, of the, the head of the majority party always is the prime minister, right, automatically. This is the head of the other, the second party in the coalition. So this is why you have a deputy prime minister. And also, when you look at these cabinets, look at, it's very interesting to look at the various uh, issue areas, right? Because the names are not the same. And sometimes policy, you know, some names are uh, identical. Every cabinet will have a minister of foreign affairs, no matter how you call it. A minister of uh, finance, right? No matter how you call it. Uh, a minister of um, uh, in, uh, order, uh, which is the interior minister in, in Europe. Uh, a minister of uh, defense, so those are common, but there are also specific areas which you will, you know, maybe your eyebrows will uh, tell you that something, uh, it's surprising that they would choose such, a, such an issue area. Well, that reflects the, the priorities of the given government at a given time. So if you see something strange, it's perhaps it's because the party that is in power considers that a special area, so they establish an entire um, executive branch an executive uh, well, system uh, of institutions to uh, manage that area, to, to emphasize it. So let's look at through, the, through these uh, titles. Uh, William Hague, Secretary of State, uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, Secretary of State, just like in the UK, means Minister of Foreign Affairs. Again, it's strange because in most countries it's actually called that. Chancellor of the Exchequer actually is what in the US is the Secretary of the Treasury which is my Minister of Finance. And then you will have home, um, the Home Department is um, law and order, it's order, it's uh, police. Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, you see this is, this is more specifically uh, uh, dealing with foreign affairs. Justice, defense, and here it is, business, innovation and skills. Business, innovation, and skills. So that's clearly something that this government, this party in power, emphasizes. Because they separated it from, let's say, just a general, generic minister of the economy. So this is for business innovation, right? It's an emphasis there, and acquiring skills, right? Work and pensions is typical, health is typical, 
communities and local government and faith. Again, the faith not necessarily, you know, we will not, you won't necessarily see it in any, in every UK government. So clearly this is an emphasis for the conservative government. Uh, communities and local government, again, an emphasis, surprisingly, for the conservative uh, government. Actually, it used to be their opponents who emphasized local government, not the conservatives. But education, women and equalities, right? Clearly, again, uh, emphasis in on certain policy priorities. International development, right? That's a special ministry there. Uh, energy and climate change, again, it tells you that there is a specific thing. It's not just energy. Uh, transport, and so on and so on. And you will also notice that because the UK is such a strange thing, it is a united kingdom, it's a unitary state, but it is because of devolution, because of how it was um, constituted, and the fact that it is a multinational state, you also have component units. Unitary state with component units, and now with devolution, they have more and more autonomy. So you have a Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, a Secretary of State for Scotland especially, for Wales, and then you have culture, media, and sport, um, and so on. Let's look at uh, France. And here you will see um, the Prime Minister, and with the, the larger pictures would be the, the main ministry, and within the, that ministry there you will have branches of the ministry. So you have the Prime Minister, then you have ministers who work with him, for example the Minister of State, there is a special minister to deal with the Parliament. Because this is a semi-presidential system where the executive does depend on support from the parliament, right? Remember this, the, the whole chart. Uh, just like in the UK, it depends, but here also, right? Not unlike in the in the US, although the president needs to have a good relation with Congress, but it doesn't depend on his position. Um, okay, a, a good interesting uh, note here: Minister of State for State Reform and Simplification. And this is attached to the Prime Minister, so clearly a priority for this uh, government. So let's just go through these positions quickly. Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Development. Again, notice the International Development side there. And other minister, ministers of state are sort of lower ministers within this ministry. Different aspects of uh, foreign affairs. Ecology, sustainable development and energy. Notice that ecology comes before energy. And transport is within it, unlike in the US, right? National education, higher education, and research prioritized. Justice, finance, you see, down the line. Defense, especially for veterans. Social affairs, health, and women's rights. Again, you see how the title tells you about their policy priorities. And again, they have some ministries of, ministers of state for those. Labor, employment, vocational training, and social dialogue. The importance, it's a socialist government, so you can uh, draw your own conclusions there. Ministry of the Interior, again, this means police. This means police. Agricultural, agri-food, and forestry. Um, uh, agriculture and food is very important in France. Economy, industry, and the digital sector. Notice digital sector. Housing, regional equality and rural affairs, decentralization and civil service, culture and communication, urban affairs, youth and sport, overseas France, remember French, France has counties that are not actually in Europe, and so on. And finally, Germany. So here you have uh, several links and you have to navigate them. So this is just the pictures and the names of the individuals and it tells you what they are. So you have the Chancellor, then you have uh, Minister for Economic Affairs and Energy and this is kind of, it tells you also the priority. You also, in, within each cabinet there are more important more, uh, ministries uh, that a party leader wants to get. So the, for example in Germany, remember, it's a parliamentary system so all these will be um, Members of Parliament, perhaps, not necessarily, not like in the UK where they have to be members of Parliament, but they will be connected with the parties that have the majority, right? Because all the mandate of the executive comes from the Parliament, the Bundestag, that's the only institution that is directly elected. 
So here's the head of the majority party, but it's a coalition. So you will have the other ones coming from the other parties. And, and other names who will also be leaders in the uh, coalition parties or specialists, right? But uh, my point is that you're the leader of the second party in the coalition, right? The lower, smaller party. You will want certain positions in the cabinet because certain ministries are more important and more visible. Well, ask yourself which would those be? Which are more prominent, which are more visible? But foreign affairs, right? Foreign affairs because it's on TV all the time and it's always glamorous and it's hard to get into trouble. It's more, it's easier to be, in a way, foreign affairs minister than, for example, minister of education or health because people will never be satisfied with these things that affect their daily lives. But foreign affairs is sort of this glamorous big thing. So, you see, uh, that's a very important for creating a uh, an image and a career, or uh, you know, the economy. If the, the person is, is keen on that, also it's a very powerful tool, right? Whoever holds the power of the purse. That's the case here. Zimar Gabriel is from the social social democrats, who are the coalition partners with the Christian Democrats. Um, interestingly enough, by the way, they usually are the big major, major rivals, it's like Republicans and Democrats. But in this case, they have to make a coalition because there are three other parties and they didn't have enough otherwise. Uh, to have a majority in the parliament. So he chose what? He chose economy because it's very important and it's actually going well. So let's look at some other titles here. Uh, foreign Affairs, Steinmeier also from the Social Democrats, you see, they uh, chose this. Then Minister of the Interior, the Christian Democrat. Justice and Consumer Protection, here's another parameter that we didn't encounter before. Finance. Labor and social affairs, food and agriculture, defense, it's a lady, uh, family affairs, senior citizens, women and youth, health, transport and digital infrastructure, environment, nature conservation, building and nuclear safety, education and research, cooperation and development, special ministry, and uh, this is just an, another minister in. So here you also have, you can go to the, to see uh, the ministries, each of them. So, you know, browse through these uh, links. And there's a PDF document that I also linked here, where you have all of them on one document. There you go. So, Use this as a sort of a background for, our, for this discussion, right, and understand it and browse it and be able to give some examples of, uh, of, of you know, certain minister, ministries and, and so on. Um, and we will continue this lecture with uh, part two, which when we will deal with the entire administrative uh, structure.